Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Friday, September 7th, and this is going to be one of two videos that I'm posting today. The first video is a new winner for the contest, for the giveaway, because the first winner, like I said in the video, he had 48 hours, actually gave about 50 hours, a little, you know, two hours more than two days, um, to get back to me so I could find out the shipping address, and, well, the winner never got a hold of me. So we're going for a runner-up, and the runner-up, same thing, four to eight hours. I was hoping to send out the package today, the, the, the prize, but that's not happening. So anyway, without further ado, this is a review of the Strato Mini's Scorcher Mech. Uh, this mech is made out of resin. You might remember I received a whole bunch of stuff from Strato Mini's um, not too long, a couple days ago. I did a video that was focused more on the 15 millimeter infantry that was sent to me I didn't know I was gonna get any of the the mechs so I received the mechs this is gonna be the first one I will have a follow-up video with the other three or four that I received once I get working on them but I wanted to do this one first this is the scorcher um it just appealed to me for some reason he looks like a hefty little fellow so you know I've got these buildings by Elida uh, I know I pronounced them wrong last time but these are the buildings I got from Elida Studios um, in uh, Turkey. Just to give you a scale reference, and I do have the CAV mech that I worked on sitting over here in the back. Um, now you do have to forgive me, I don't know Battletech lore. Last time I played Battletech was the late 80s, early 90s when it was first coming out and first released as Battletech. Never got into the lore, so I don't know anything about 2350, 2025, you know... Cracker Jack, craziness, whatever, inner sphere, outer sphere, in your hole, out your hole, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. I'm telling you flat out, I don't know. All I know is that I like this little mech. So, it is small, smaller than what I remember some Battletech mechs to be, but I think it's still in line. Um, so like I said, it is made in resin. Um, I went ahead and magnetized it to make things easier. I'll get to the magnetization parts in a moment. The only thing glued were the legs because I figured the legs, they're going to be in static pose. So, like I said, it's in resin. They're, they're not bad. Um, there is a mold line right here, as you can see on this leg. Pretty decent mold line. Um, this one also, let me bring the light down just a little bit. Okay. Um... So this is the left leg, right leg, not so much. This mold line, I mean, I've sanded it down. I ended up sanding down a little bit of the detail that was up here um, because of that mold line. On the back, there's, this is the lower torso. There's, as you can see, one right down the middle. Not bad, though. I mean, you can work with it. Um, there wasn't that much flash, but I had to use the back of my... Uh, hobby knife in order to get it down, scrape it down enough. Um, these parts are on a rather large piece of resin. So, you know, you got to chop and sand a little bit. Um, when it comes to mix, I've been spoiled by Bandai. So, you know, I'm not used to working with resin so much. But yeah, on this piece right here, like I said, this leg, that mold line is pretty pronounced. Um, everything else is decent. I still got a little bit of cleanup to do right there, as you can see. So let's go up to the upper torso. The upper torso is not not bad either. Um, there were some air bubbles, which I expect. There's one right here. Um, I don't know if that is supposed to be one or not. I'm assuming it is. And then there's another one right here. But that's where some gates were. Still got to do a little bit of cleaning up. You can see I did the magnet right there. Real easy. And then there was another one. Oh, maybe that was it. So for here, there is a pretty, pretty big mold slip right there that you can see. Right here on the back. There you go. So yeah, there is a mold slip right there. Um, not much I could do about it. It's there, it's there. 
and that's going to happen. Then with the arms, the firing arms, unfortunately, and this is just my opinion, this is the outside. It looks kind of plain. The inside, though, is where the great detail is. I really wish this would have been on the outside. That looks cool. I really like that on the outside. But unfortunately, since it's on the inside, you're not going to be able to see that when you're playing. Even with the magne magnetizing, that's about all you're going to see. You're not going to see it when it's there. So yeah, I that I think is a missed opportunity. Um, like I said, I'm not in 40 uh, in BattleTech lore. I don't know if this is a proxy for another one. I think it is. It might be, or inspired by one. But yeah, this this I really think this detail should have been on the outside of the weapon. I think that would have looked really really cool. Um, so as far as the arms themselves, not a whole lot going on there other than my camera shaking a lot um, I think there might have been a mold slip I don't know because I had to sand down a piece and as you can see it got rid of that one small detail there that one line now where'd the arm go see and here's the other arm so it's got that nice little detail right there or this one has it sanded off now. And again, that inside detail, it's, it's gorgeous. I like it. I just really wish it would have been on the outside. As far as the gates go, um, the gates were on this part right here. I'll put this down. The gates were on this right here. A little bit of sanding, you get that off real quick. Super easy. So yeah, that's about it. Um, magnetizing was, like I said, rather easy. Those who know how to use magnets, you know, you've got experience doing it. You know what you're looking for. Um, I used two by ones because that's all I had. So I had to go a little bit deeper than I wanted to. Um, so on movement, see on the bottom of the torso, it has these two pieces right here. So your movement is kind of limited. Because, I mean, you can do it because, you know, once you magnetize it, you can do it. It's just, it's going to scrape it a little bit. Just kind of lift it up. So the movement's kind of limited on that. Still makes it a little bit more dynamic. And the weapons, like I said, I, you know, if I could flip them over. But it's not going to work. There's a polarization on the magnet. The way I set up the polarization on the magnets are not going to allow it. So yeah, it's not a bad little mech. Um, very light. I guess that's common with resin mechs now because of their size. They are very, very, it's very, very light. Um, so with the Elida Studios product, I'm guessing this is to scale. I honestly don't know. Like I said, I played Battletech so long ago that we didn't have buildings. There might have been buildings, but they were scratch built. All we played were on the little hex map, that, that thick cardboard hex map that came with the game. That's all we had. So that looks cool. So next to my cav mech, the cav mech is obviously a monster. So we have that there. Let's take off the little base insert. Now I believe cav mechs are supposed to be like 15 feet tall at max. I don't have the rule book yet. I'm waiting until Kickstarter 3 before I get those. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. If I were doing my own mech game, since since the cav mech is so large, I'd say this is like a sidekick mech. You know, like a, a scout mech. Really light to go do what it's got to do. And for those asking about the cav mech real quick, not to take away from this review. Um, 
Yeah, it's, they're just plugged. They're not magnetized. They actually plug in really nicely, and they stay in uh, they stay in the position that you leave them in. Really cool. Same thing with the torso. It just comes apart. I know some people were asking about that on some pages. But yeah, they, they just go in real nice, real easy. So anyway, enough of the cav mech. Alright, so yeah. This, it's not a bad thing. Um, is it $14 and uh, worth the price for it? I, I can't give you a good answer. Because again, I've been out of the Battletech scene. And I'm just saying Battletech in general. Because that's the most commonly known mech game out there okay um, but I've been out of the battle battle tech scene for a long time over 20 years so I don't know I think the last time I bought a single metal one was maybe 15 years ago because I liked it I can't even remember what it is I don't even have that model anymore I think I gave it to a buddy or I sold it to somebody but so I don't I don't know I honestly I can't give you a good opinion you're gonna have to decide for yourself um, I like it I really do like it um, I'm gonna have an interesting paint scheme for this in mind probably something simple black and white with a skull right here or skull skull type motif that might be pretty common pretty too much on the nose but that's what I'm going for because this looks like it's a face with something going on I don't know so anyway that's the end of this. So the next video, like I said, is going to be with the rest of the mechs all together. Maybe painted. Most likely painted. And we'll see how they look. We'll see how they go compared to each other. So yeah. Strato Minis Scorcher. I will put a link in the description below of the Strato Mini website. And once again, I'll do another link to Elida Studios in Turkey. Because they're the ones that produced this awesome mech kit. Studios building. Really cool. Oh, yeah, one thing. Um, up until September 20th, Strato Minis will not be sending out any packages. Because I guess the whole studio is on holiday. I believe the studio is like four or five guys. So they all took holiday. So if you place an order, just keep in mind, you're not going to see it for a while. Because order fulfillment will not begin until they go back into the studio September 20th. I just saw that on their website this morning. All right. Um, oh, yeah. One other thing. So I wanted to base this. Right. I've got, I was thinking of magnetizing the, the, put a magnet in the foot. And putting on one of these old Battletech um, bases that I have. But because it's sunken in, I'm seeing that it would, like, fit like this um i was thinking of using the ordering some cab insert type bases like this but it would essentially be the same thing where the edge of the feet is going to go on the lip so what i've done is i took a spare piece of cork that i actually have cut it to size it's the same exact height as this same thing except it doesn't have this dip in it so what i'm going to do is i will end up drilling a hole in the in one of the feet putting a magnet in here put a magnet in here that way it's there it's still light but it's still based and it's still the same height as this base same height as this base so there you go that's a quick tip and basically all you got to do is just take this and where uh, did I put it away yeah I'm gonna have to do a couple more basically you're, you're just gonna take and that's the only thing I don't like about these bases I can't get a finger hold on I'm sorry about that um, just take this like this whoops that was an extra piece um, once you start doing them they're pretty much gonna fall in line yeah you're just gonna take that and I'm just lining it up with that edge just take your knife and cut boom 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 and you're done got yourself a quick little base already textured paint some gray on it with a few lines for a street that's it you're done Quick little tip, if you get these, if you got some cork sitting around, I don't remember what thickness this is. I think it's like 3 millimeter or 5 millimeter. I am not entirely sure. Picked it up at Walmart for like 3 bucks because it's in clearance from the school supplies section. So, there you go. That's your quick little tip for the day. 
All right, everybody, y'all have a good day. Stay safe. Be good. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.